In this video, we're going to be talking about how to install climbing holds and everything that you need to know about that. Thank you for choosing to watch Climber Dad. Let's get going. Now before we talk about putting climbing holds on climbing walls, I need to talk about the different ways that climbing holds are installed. So this hold uses a bolt. This is zinc plated. It's 3 8 by 16 thread. That is in the US. Uh, in Europe, I believe it is a 10 mil bolt. I don't know what the thread pitch is. Okay, same thing. This is this uh, this these black oxidized bolts are more typical to see. You can also have a fluted head bolt like this. See that? And then you also have screw-on holds. So you would use a wood screw similar to this right here. So I would take a bolt, I'd drop it down through the bolt hole, and it's going to stick out the back side, and that gets screwed into what's called a T-nut. Now on your climbing wall surface, I'm going to use this uh, hang board that I built for an example because it is basically a climbing wall, a small climbing wall. So on the back side of this surface, we have what's called T-nuts, and those T-nuts are what allows the bolts to be screwed on. You can see right here I've got a thread, some threads sticking through there. That holds those holds on. This is three quarter inch plywood. This is pretty standard for what climbing walls are made out of. Now let's say you wanted to install some climbing holds going down your hallway for your child or for yourself maybe in a stairwell, which I have mixed feelings about, but you know, it can work, I guess. Before you just start screwing holds onto that wall, you're going to need to install something that's a little bit more substantial than your drywall. And I would recommend installing some three quarter inch plywood over that entire surface, and I would space it out with either two by fours or strips of three quarter inch plywood, but two by fours would work better. So that's gonna space that climbing surface off of the wall, give it a little bit more additional strength, and make sure that you're not gonna be damaging the drywall with these T-nuts and bolts coming through. Now the other type of climbing hold is a screw-on climbing hold. They're usually a little bit smaller, like this guy right here. However, they can be large. I typically try to design my holds so it uses more, a uh, minimum of three, but it's going to be kind of the same thing where you put your screw through the climbing hold itself and then screw it to the wall. The same thing applies to the screw-on climbing holds as your regular bolt-on climbing holds as far as the climbing wall surface is concerned. You need to have something substantial there to allow these screws to bite down on and hold. Again, I would recommend three quarter inch plywood for that surface. Now, how do you install these T-nuts? Because really that's a part of this topic as well. These T-nuts, they typically will take a half inch or seven sixteenths drill bit to drill the holes through the plywood. And then they install on the back side. Yes, they must be installed on the back side of your climbing wall surface. So if you're hanging this plywood in your home to build a small climbing wall, you have to install the T-nuts before these panels go on and make sure that they are on the back side. Uh, this seems like a very simple mistake and one that would be easily avoided, but you might be surprised at how many times I have seen this from questions of people reaching out to me that are building their climbing walls. Speaking of building your own climbing walls, if you want to have some very simple freestanding design build plans 
I have an Etsy shop set up where I'm selling these climbing wall designs and it greatly supports the channel. I really appreciate all those that have purchased these build plans in the past and will be purchasing them in the future. It's really made a huge difference in the climber dad life. Thank you very much. The last thing that I need to talk about with installing climbing holds is route setting. Now route setting is a very specific thing on how to put your climbing holds on in a specific pattern. That pattern is very subjective to the person that's setting the route. But there are some rules that are going to help you start to set if you've never set before. And if you have been setting for a long time, please put down in the comments some of the techniques that you use that I skipped over. It would be a huge benefit to everyone that is watching this video, and I thank you in advance for doing that. With route setting, you have to have the end user in mind. If you are setting on your home wall, this is probably you, which makes it a lot easier to start setting, to be honest, because you know exactly how you climb. Don't just favor your movements. Try to push yourself out of the box. Uh, if you're setting for yourself, reach isn't as big of a deal as it is if you're setting for someone else. If you're setting for someone else, I always try to use the elbow rule so I can touch every single hold with my elbow before I set that move. Unless it's like a specific move like a dyno or something that I really want to, to challenge someone on. Another thing is don't forget about the feet. You can put your holds on, your hand holds on, and then come back and fill in the feet. But feet are very important in rock climbing. And you want to provide or the lack thereof, if it, that's in the plan, for your feet. You always have to think about your feet. Before you put any holds on the wall, you need to look at the holds that you have, the surface that you're going to be climbing on, whether it's overhanging or dead vertical or what you have volumes, and then create a plan. Now this plan is kind of a rough sketch design of what you want to do, the climbing movements that you want to put into the, to the route. But keep in mind that it is not the final draft. Oftentimes when I've been route setting, I will have a, a great plan that I come in with and I think I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then I start putting the holds on and it tells me something else. I need to do this, or actually this would work out really well in this situation if we did this. And it's okay to deviate a little bit from your plan so you can get a good quality climbing route. I've made quite a few videos on route setting, so I'm not gonna go into that in that much detail, but know that it is definitely a big process of installing climbing holds on your climbing wall. I hope that this video has helped you out. If it has, like it, subscribe, and also share it with somebody else that you think might need this information. And I will see you next time right here on Climber Dad. And remember, climbing shock saves lives.